Hi guys, Neo once again from the Overshock Magazine. So this time I'm bringing you yet another review of course, but it's a little bit different this time. This is a CPU and a small CPU at that, specifically the AMD Ryzen 3. 3100. The 3100 is a CPU that M uh, AMD was selling or at least stated that would be selling for around $100 or $100. Woodware, which actually was the retailer that provided the testing sample for me, uh, is selling the same CPU for $2,399. So you could check that out and as always check if they have stock because these cpus go so quickly and and sort of understand why it's hard to get the cpus. I mean we're looking at one of the best bang for buck CPUs to come out in a while. And that's saying a lot when you're looking at a market that has um, Intel's 10th generation, the 10300 and all sorts of CPUs which were previously not available. But still, even in the face of all of that competition, I do believe that AMD's 3100 and uh, 3300X give better value than any other CPU you could find right now, particularly if you already have a motherboard uh, let's say an X470 or maybe even a B450 board, you know, that's compatible. It means that you can literally have a drop in upgrade. The 3300 and the 3100 have a unique distinction. Within the single CCD, they're actually using two CCX units. So two cores enabled on one CCX and two cores enabled on another CCX. And this is in comparison to the 3300X, which just uses a single CCX with all four cores in it. So what that does is it allows the CPU to use a localized cache. Whereas on the 3100, because it uses two CCX units, you're only getting eight megabytes of L3 cache in each of the CCX units. So obviously there's a latency penalty with that. And I'm not sure about the CCX cross communication, but there might be an issue with that. There might be some penalties involved with that. With my previous experience with Ryzen CPUs, whether it's the uh, Ryzen 5, uh, I think the 3600 and 3600X and the Ryzen 7 and even the Ryzen 9, I found that the highest frequency I could do with air cooling or at least with an AIO was 4.4 gigahertz. So when it comes to the 3100X, I figured, hey, let me just try 4.5 because I had read already from the other reviews and other YouTubers saying that these CPUs overclock well. I tried my luck with this sample and lo and behold, it was actually 4,500 megahertz capable and pretty stable. So when I say 4,500 megahertz, I'm talking in the BIOS, I'm talking, uh, I set 1.322 volts. And this is on, by the way, this is on the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro motherboard. Load, temp uh, load uh, voltages of about 1.296. Okay, so that's pretty reasonable. And I think you can run that 24 hours or you can run that every day without issue. So, what do you get for stock performance? Stock performance is pretty awesome. You know, I, I won't complain about it. I think it just, it does what you would expect it to do. So basically expect a 7700K, um, 7700 performance, not K necessarily, but 7700 performance. However, the exciting bit for us, which enthusiasts, gamers and so forth, is actually what it does when it's overclocked. And given that you, it's such a great overclocker, why wouldn't you do it? At 4.5 gigahertz is when it starts to challenge the performance of better CPUs. So compared to the 3600 or the 3600X, the 3100 clocked at 4.5 gigahertz delivered better performance than the 3600 at 4.4 gigahertz. That speaks to the single thread performance that's important, which is just clock speed. And it also speaks to what the competition, AMD's competition has been pushing forward with, right? Single thread performance is still the determining factor of game performance, so at least for the most part. The 2,400 Rand that you are being charged is literally nothing. You could basically build a budget machine um, that outperforms a lot of mid-range machines using different CPUs. And I mean, the performance that I saw and what I got, I'm not surprised that it's very difficult to find these CPUs. If you are able to get one, definitely buy one, okay? Even if it's one for a backup, it's just such a good CPU. Um, it runs cool, number one. So at no point did I ever record temperatures above 90 degrees. That's even during Prime 95. With, uh, what do you call this? The Wraith Prism cooler, which I mounted on the 3100, it still never reached 90 degrees and it was still able to maintain the 4.5 gigahertz overclock. So for almost half the price, if not half the price or less, you're gonna get a CPU that it's probably doing better than AMD would have wanted it to. I mean, come on, it's cannibalizing the other products, right? 
But this is not new. I think Intel suffered the same thing as well with the four core CPU that could overclock. And this is the one advantage that AMD CPUs have specifically in the low end. So with Intel, if you are looking for a budget machine, you're basically looking at an H4, H470 motherboard with your 10400 or something of the sort, or you're looking at a, B, a B460 board. But either way, with any of those, you can't do any or sort of overclocking and the CPUs are locked anyway. So if you're able to get those two things, a B450 board and a 3100, I think you could get away with building a powerful but supremely affordable gaming machine. I think you could get B450 motherboards for about 2,100. Once again, at Woodware, I think they have a ASRock B450 Steel Legend, which is actually the same board as a, as a B450M Steel Legend, which I found just, that was an incredible board. You can actually check out that review or that quick rundown of that motherboard in the link below. But anyway, if you can put together the B450 Steel Legend with uh, a Ryzen 3100, for example, yeah, you will have saved a ton of money and you're gonna get performance that's better than if you had spent literally twice as much, if not more. And productivity workloads and things of that nature, of course, it's going to lose to the 3600 and basically any other CPU that has more cores and more threads. That's no question about it. Once again, this is 2,400 Rand or $100 versus CPUs that are going to cost twice as much, if not more. But when it comes to gaming, which is what matters, right, for the vast majority of people who are looking at the 3100, yeah, just give it a little bit of juice, overclock, definitely overclock, because the reference 3.6 gigahertz that it comes at, which is the base frequency, and the turbo frequency of 3.9 gigahertz, it's not gonna take you anywhere, okay? Those frequencies are just too low. In fact, for AMD systems, anything outside of four gigahertz is just not really usable, but for gaming at least. But now at 4.5 gigahertz, oh, then things are different. I mean, yeah, I know the hype is about the 3300X and unfortunately I didn't get to test that, right? But from what I observed with the 3100 at, even, at an even cheaper price, wow. It's just such a great CPU, okay? So I might change my tune when I eventually get to try the 3300X, but right now, the 3100 is the one that I'm really liking. And oh, 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 while I was dealing with the 3100, I decided to try uh, to find out how far it would go with some dry ice, okay? And I mounted it once again on the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro. I got some pretty respectable numbers, performance numbers, particularly for Geekbench. Um, I'm not so sure about Cinebench because I mean, who's competing there, right? But uh, it did give some, some size of a performance. So the max frequency that I got with the 3100 under dry eyes was 5.2 gigahertz. I think I could do W prime 32M at probably 5.25 gigahertz, but it just wasn't stable enough and I wasn't willing to give it more juice than I already had. So definitely check out the AMD Ryzen, 31, Ryzen 3 3100. As far as I'm concerned from where I'm sitting, yeah, the CPU is difficult to dislike, right? It's just, it's impossible. It literally does everything that it's supposed to do. And at that price, I couldn't like dislike it even if I wanted to. So go on and check it out. See if you can find it. If you can find it, buy it. Because like I said, it's a difficult CPU to come by. But if you do manage to get a hold of one, definitely buy one and you will not be disappointed. Until next time then, take a look at the benchmarks, right? And you'll see for yourself what I'm talking about when I say the performance is pretty dope. Anyway. Um, let me know what you think about the 3100 or the 3300. Are you running it right now? How are you finding it? How is your overclocking and how is your experience with it? Are you pairing it with the B550, 450? Does it even make a difference? Let me know in the comments below what you think. And until next time, remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.